having the right composition of beneficial bacteria in the gut can help with weight loss, insulin resistance, and inflammation. Hi, I'm Julianne. I'm a nurse practitioner and functional medicine provider. Now let's start by talking about the microbiome and its importance in overall wellness. The microbiome is a collection of trillions of microorganisms that inhabit the gastrointestinal tract. Now this includes communities of bacteria, viruses, parasites, and fungi. Different than your genetics, which are fixed, the microbiome is dynamic and can be modified. In fact, it changes based on factors like diet, stress, sleep, medications, and environmental factors. The gut microbiome plays a vital role in nutrient exchange and resistance to invasion from pathogens. Having the right types of beneficial bacteria in your gut can drastically improve your overall wellness and also prevent disease. The gut microbiome is divided into a mucus layer bacteria and intestinal lumen bacteria based on the colonization distribution. Now, the keystone bacteria that we are going to focus on today is Acromantia mucinophilia, and it prefers to colonize in that intestinal mucus layer. Let's start with a few more facts about this very important bacteria. Acromantia mucinophilia is an oval gram-negative anaerobic bacteria. It belongs to the Viricomicrobia phylum, and it is the only strain that lives in the mucus lining. Now, acromantia reaches adult levels in the intestine within the first year after birth, and it represents up to 4% of the microbiome, which is a huge percentage. Now, this bacteria has appeared in over 2,000 scientific publications, and it's a very hot topic of research. This probiotic strain of bacteria was first discovered in 2004 when researchers were looking for a new mucin-degrading microbe. So let's talk about what that actually means. The lining of the intestines are made up of epithelial cells. Now, these are cells that cover the surfaces of organs throughout the body. These epithelial cells are also covered in a slimy mucus layer that is rich in a protein called mucin. Acromantia loves mucin and uses it for energy. The more mucin that acromantia consumes or eats, the more it encourages the epithelial cells to make additional mucin. This additional mucin making strengthens that intestinal wall, which is critical for gut health and overall wellness. Now, it also releases short-chain fatty acids, such as acetate, butyrate, and propionate. These short-chain fatty acids, also abbreviated SCFA, production provides energy for the host and promotes colonization of the bacteria itself. Now, short-chain fatty acids, again, are metabolites that can modulate the inflammatory response and contribute to health and homeostasis. Additional health benefits include regulating the immune system, preventing obesity, diabetes, and cancer. These short-chain fatty acids are also cardioprotective, hepatoprotective, and neuroprotective. The long and the short of it is that we want more short-chain fatty acids in the body, and acromantia helps to make that happen. So what is acromantia's actual function? The core functions of this bacteria are extremely important to establishing an optimal ecosystem within the gut. Now, as we've already established, acromantia's affinity for mucin plays this vital role in maintaining gut barrier integrity. The epithelial cells, the tight junctions between those cells, and this overlying mucin layer form a barrier that prevents toxic substances, undigested food, and harmful pathogens that are within the gut lumen from entering out into the peripheral circulation. Acromantia contributes to maintaining these tight junctions between the epithelial cells and modulates gut immunity by producing antimicrobial peptides within the mucin layer. By preventing these harmful substances from entering the circulation, there's less inflammation and less of a risk of autoimmune disorders. Now let's talk about a huge problem within our country, and that is obesity. It's estimated that 41.9% of adults and 17% of children and adolescents are obese. Wow, right? The danger is that obesity is the ultimate pathway to so many chronic diseases. Research suggests that the composition of the gut microbiome 
can actually predict an individual's likelihood of being obese. We also know that the composition of your gut microbiome can facilitate weight loss or can cause resistance to weight loss. In fact, acromancia has been found to be more abundant in leaner individuals when compared with their obese counterparts. So in summary, the composition of the gut microbiome could predict how successful we are at achieving our weight loss goals. I want to share with you some information from a project called the American Gut Project. There were over 10,000 participants, and what they found is that BMI, or body mass index, and acromancia are inversely proportionate. So basically, the lower the acromancia, the higher the BMI. Now, people who have higher levels of acromancia were also found to respond better to diets. For example, if you took two people, both obese, one with healthy levels of acromancia, and one with low levels of acromancia, the person with the healthy levels responded better and had better outcomes and response to the same diet. The healthiest metabolic status, specifically in three areas, fasting blood glucose, triglyceride levels, and body fat distribution. Another interesting discovery in research is in the centennial population. The microbial ecosystem found in these extremely older individuals was found to be enriched in acromancia and also bifidobacterium, which lends us to think that these bacteria play a role in longevity. Now, unfortunately, many people are low in acromancia or don't even have any detectable levels of acromancia at all. The lack of or decreased levels have been linked to the prevalence of multiple metabolic diseases. This is something that I see in my practice quite frequently. Now, the real implications of low levels of acromancia are in the progression of metabolic, autoimmune, and neurodegenerative diseases. In addition to lowering inflammation, maintaining a healthy body weight, and even longevity. Maybe now you're wondering, what causes this keystone bacteria to be low? Well, the lack of or low levels of acromancia in the gut is associated with a thin mucus layer. So, weakening of the barrier function, and also with obesity, diabetes, and metabolic disorders. Now, unfortunately, acromancia levels do tend to decrease with age, as well as with repeated use of antibiotics and the prevalence of a Western diet that's low in fiber and polyphenols. So, how do you know if your acromancia levels are optimal? Testing for acromancia can be done through a single stool sample. There are several options to choose from, all of which can be ordered through Rupa. The most popular comprehensive stool tests that measure acromancia levels are the GI map from Diagnostic Solutions and GI effects from Genova Diagnostics. I would encourage you to work with your provider to get one of these stool tests ordered so that you can check your acromancia levels. Now let's suppose you've taken a stool test and your acromancia is low or possibly even non-existent. I see this a lot in my patients. So what are the steps in increasing your acromancia to healthy levels? Well, you should first know that acromancia is actually not found in food. However, it does love polyphenol-rich foods and also prebiotic fibers. Polyphenols are phytochemicals that give fruits and vegetables their beautiful and vibrant colors. Polyphenols protect plants from predators and protect us from disease by upregulating our body's natural antioxidant system and optimizing our gut flora. This results in lower intestinal and systemic inflammation and improved metabolic outcomes. Now, polyphenols are found in foods like cranberries, green tea, grapeseed, pomegranate, apples, berries, nuts, and olives. And these type foods have been shown to support a healthy environment so that acromancia can thrive in the gut microbiome. Also, daily oral intake of cranberry extract for eight weeks has been shown to prevent weight gain and increase the abundance of acromancia in the gut. Now let's talk about prebiotic fibers. These are non-digestible carbohydrates that can help to promote the abundance of beneficial bacteria in the gut. And these can be consumed through food. Here are some foods that contain prebiotic fibers. Asparagus, bananas, flax seeds, garlic, onions, leeks, Jerusalem artichoke, oats, and seaweed. Another important fact to remember is that acromancia is an anaerobic strain, meaning that it needs an oxygen-free environment to live. 
Now, this has made it somewhat difficult for probiotic companies to manufacture a strain of Acromantia. Pendulum is the only company thus far that has been able to manufacture this probiotic strain of Acromantia. A few other considerations when the Acromantia is low is to support the gut lining. Using things like L-glutamine for support, omegas found in fish oil and flaxseed oil can also help Acromantia to flourish. Studies have shown that intermittent fasting can increase amounts of acromantia. The antioxidant quercetin can also be supportive. And I would also encourage you, if your acromantia levels are low, to consider adding butyrate. Butyrate is the main fuel source for cells that line the gut, and it is one of those short-chain fatty acids that we discussed. It supports digestive health, it helps to control inflammation, and it can prevent leaky gut. Speaking of leaky gut, Given that we know that low acromantia levels are highly associated with leaky gut, aka increased intestinal permeability, consider supporting the gut lining with not only L-glutamine and omegas, but also you may need a 5R functional medicine protocol, which you will want to work with a provider on. This 5R functional medicine gut healing protocol consists of, first, removal. This stage involves removing pathogens that may be causing issues. The second R is replace. In this phase, we replace digestive enzymes, hydrochloric acid, and bile to support digestion and optimize nutrient absorption. The third R stands for re-inoculate. This is where we re-inoculate with probiotics, prebiotics, and fiber to support the gut microbiome. The fourth R stands for repair correcting any intestinal inflammation and restoring that mucus lining is what is involved in this step. The fifth R is rebalance. Here we take a good look at overall lifestyle. This includes diet, stress levels, sleep, all the things that are foundational that may need to be rebalanced to support a healthy lifestyle and a healthy gut. One last topic I'd like to address is the question of can your acromantia levels be too high? Patients ask me this all the time. Well, we have test results showing acromantia levels overgrown or elevated, often patients will ask, well, isn't this a good thing? It's actually not. We want this good homeostatic, healthy balance of acromantia, meaning we don't want too low levels, but we also don't want too high levels. Now, high levels have been associated with high carb and sugar intake. Also, high levels have been associated with diseases like Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, multiple sclerosis, and metabolic syndrome. Now remember, metabolic syndrome is classified as this cluster of symptoms, including insulin resistance, obesity, dyslipidemia, and hypertension, that increases your risk for heart disease, type 2 diabetes, and stroke. There's also some thought that high acromantia levels may be indicative of some other process going on in the body, such as a compromised mucin layer versus a true increase in abundance or overabundance. With that being said, what can you do if your acromantia levels are high or overgrown? Taking a look at your diet to see, are you perhaps consuming too many carbs and sugar? Maybe we need to make some modifications there. Working on inflammation and supporting that gut lining. And also, research shows that polyphenols are neuroprotective in conditions that are associated with high acromantia levels. I hope that this was helpful, and if you like this video, please subscribe to our channel for more videos just like this.